this is lecture number 36 of the course ME314 Fluid Mechanics 2 and this is the uh, uh, third lecture of this week. Uh, we have already completed the introduction to external flow and uh, today we will address uh, drag and lift. Uh, so the topics we were going to study is uh, when a body is immersed uh, in a fluid it experiences a resultant force and we will talk about that. And the once this resultant force is uh, divided into components like uh, dr uh, drag and lift. Uh, and then we will go into the defining drag coefficient uh, and we will solve a problem uh, based calculating the drag coefficient and uh, in the end we will look into the uh, pressure distribution as well as the shear distribution in uh, over the different, different shapes of the bodies. Okay, so let's start if we have the uh, 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 body is immersed in a fluid and it experiences a resultant force and uh, that is actually due to the interaction between the body and the fluid. And uh, if you see that there is a uniform speed and there is a body and this body is experiencing a force. And uh, what uh, we experience a force is actually the resultant force that is on the body, which is actually the uh, vector sum of the forces uh, in the uh, direction parallel to the uh, free stream direction. And uh, there is a force, what you call it a lift force, which is uh, normal to the direction of the free stream. So uh, uh, there are so many examples like for example uh, when a kite, uh, you are flying a kite and uh, you are experiencing that resultant force and uh, in, uh, once you have a kite and a kite is uh, being flying with a, uh, uh, a string and then the, there is a tension uh, that is being developed on that string. Uh, that tension is actually the resultant force and if you see that uh, uh, there is a certain uh, angle uh, which this resultant is there and uh, uh, there is a free stream direction air is uh, approaching towards the kite so there is a force what you call it a drag force that is uh, in the direction parallel to the free stream direction and what you call it a lift force is actually the force that is in the uh, uh, direction uh, normal to the free stream direction. So uh, whenever you are flying that kite, so that the tension in the string is actually the resultant of that force and uh, this resultant is uh, due to the uh, uh, contribution of the drag and the lift component. So now we see more closely whenever uh, there is a uh, uh, forces that has been acting onto the fluid body interface because the fluid is flowing and there is a body immersed in a fluid and uh, there is an interface what you call it a fluid body interface. So on that interface there is certain distribution of pressure. So upstream side some other pressure and uh, along the uh, length of the body there is certain distribution of pressure or to call it a pressure distribution and similarly uh, on the surface uh, due to the viscous effects uh, there is a wall shear stress present and uh, that distribution so the whole along the length of the uh, body let's say if we have the body shape like an aerofoil so on that uh, there is a free stream velocity so if we just look at the pressure distribution so as we know velocity is higher on the upper play upper aerofoil and the bottom the velocity is low so once the velocity is low on the bottom then the pressure would be higher so some higher value of the pressure and uh, the maximum pressure would be as as you know once you have a stagnation velocity so when velocity is zero then the pressure would be maximum so somewhere you will find a maximum pressure here uh, and uh, some uh, lower pressure here so this difference of pressure is providing actually the lift so on the surface of this aerofoil you see the distribution of there is certain distribution of pressure pressure is uh, not uniform throughout the whole surface so there is uh, uh, whenever a fluid interacts with the solid body at the interface there is a distribution of uh, pressure 
uh, and similarly just like because of the wall shear stress we already have seen that uh, this friction coefficient and wall shear stress is also uh, there is a local value of the sh uh, wall shear stress because which uh, varies along the whole length of the uh, fluid body interface so there is said in uh, uh, shear stress distribution and so what is responsible for the lift and the drag and the resultant force acting onto the uh, body would be due to the fluid and solid interaction uh, this is the contribution of the pressure as well as the contribution of the shear stress and so the resultant if you add them together take the sum then obviously the, if this is the free stream direction then the force in the free stream direction would be called a drag force and the force perpendicular to the free stream direction would be called as a lift force so what is actually the drag force is actually the component of the resultant force that is acting onto the body which is in the direction of the upstream velocity would be called as drag and lift is actually the there is a resultant force acting onto the body and the component of that resultant force which is normal to the uh, upstream velocity uh, that is u infinity here uh, then this force would be called as a lift force so uh, the drag and lift on an object uh, uh, is actually due to the contribution of uh, the uh, pressure distribution as well as the uh, shear stress distribution okay now we can look into more closely uh, if you just take an arbitrary shape uh, uh, surface and having a differential area da so uh, and uh, the pressure always act normal to the surface so p uh, p is the pressure da is the area so that would be the pressure force that is acting onto this uh, differential area da and uh, uh, the wall shear stress is parallel to the surface so the wall shear stress is tau w and multiplied by area would be the shear force so that shear force is acting onto that differential area so we have just considered a small differential area so uh, let's say if uh, 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 this surface uh, makes an angle theta here so if they are uh, well, there is a line which is when two lines are uh, cut by this vertical line this line then these two angles would be equal alternate angles would be equal so here if this angle is uh, uh, theta and then if we just resolve this uh, surface uh, into horizontal component x and y so if this is theta then this would be uh, this would be also theta and this would be 90 minus theta so uh, wall shear stress would be having a component in x direction as well as component in y direction so what we do is we calculate the differential force so let's say this differential force that has been acting so two type of forces are acting the pressure force and the uh, shear stress force so uh, as we know the in the horizontal direction uh, you have this pd a cos theta component so pda is the force and with that theta so this pda cos theta would be the horizontal component in x direction uh, and the wall shear stress in this x direction would be uh, this wall shear stress times da and this is the horizontal component that would be cos of 90 minus uh, theta so these two are the forces that has been acting in the x direction for this differential area due to that pressure and due to this uh, wall shear stress. As we know from your trigonometry, uh, cos 90 minus theta is sine theta. So you can write the differential force that has been acting in the x direction would be uh, uh, PDA cos theta plus uh, this wall shear stress component. This is the pressure component. This is the wall shear stress component. Similarly, there are forces acting in the y direction. As you know, uh, y is vertically positive. So the downward direction would be PDA sin theta would be the uh, negative direction if uh, y is taken to be positive. So that would be the force in this y direction due to the pressure component and uh, uh, yeah, the wall shear stress would be uh, sin 90 minus theta and that would be in the positive direction so just have summed up the 
forces due to the pressure and the wall shear stress in y direction. Uh, sin 90 minus theta we already know as cos theta. So we know these these are the differential forces uh, acting in x and uh, uh, y direction. So uh, we know that is uh, the drag. What you call it a drag is actually the uh, two types of the forces that is acting onto this fluid solid body interaction uh, interface. Uh, at that interface due to this uh, wall shear stress or due to the viscous weight we call it a skin friction or just friction drag and there is uh, due to the um, uh, pressure that is acting onto the surface that is actually called as a pressure drag. So uh, resultant force uh, that uh, if you take the, the differential element so throughout the whole surface if you integrate it over the whole surface, you will get the total drag force. So, total drag force is nothing, just take the uh, all the differential forces acting in x direction. If you take the sum, uh, because uh, u infinity is uh, in the x direction, so that would be the drag force. So, sum of all those differential forces, if you sum up together, it will be the total uh, force in that x direction, what you call it a drag force. So here this differential force x is just substituted here which has a component due to the pressure and due to the wall shear stress. Uh, similarly we can work out the lift force. Uh, um, uh, so lift force is uh, sum of the all the uh, differential forces that is acting in the y direction. If you take the sum you are going to get uh, the uh, lift force. Uh, and here we know the two type of forces, the pressure and the uh, uh, shear stress component. So, and uh, in order to distinguish between diameter or length of the plate or diameter of the cylinder, I have just to use a different font for drag force. And so, this uh, this font is actually the um, uh, French form or font by which you can write uh, D as the drag force. Uh, so what is important here is this uh, drag force is actually uh, distributed over the whole area, over the whole surface. Uh, so the drag force is uh, uh, as this pressure distribution and wall shear stress distribution is changing, the drag force is uh, be contributing due to those two components. So uh, we already know the wall shear stress is actually the um, uh, local friction coefficient uh, can come out from this local friction coefficient and uh, uh, we can see this uh, pressure is also distributed over the whole surface of the body. So both are contributing in this drag force. Uh, drag coefficient uh, we defined as if it's a dimensionless number which is actually the uh, uh, force drag force in the numerator and uh, pressure times area would be another force in the uh, uh, denominator. So here A is uh, 1 upon rho u infinity square is actually called as a dynamic or kinetic pressure and A is the area and, and the drag force. So uh, two forces just compared uh, this dimensionless number comes out as uh, we call it a drag coefficient. So uh, let's say if we have to calculate the drag force, we multiply the drag coefficient with that number. So we will be able to calculate the drag force and uh, uh, a is the reference area and uh, uh, it depends upon uh, it could be two uh, uh, areas like it could be a frontal area or just uh, the when the fluid is experiencing that area on that front we call it front area, frontal area or it could be in case of a wing uh, aerofoil we see we see when we see from the top that is the plan view so that area of the wing would be actually called as plan form area. So it all depends upon how you define that area so that uh, we can define the drag coefficient. Uh, as we know this drag force could be due to the pressure component uh, due to the friction component. If it is due to this friction component that is the wall shear stress then it will be called as uh, um, drag due to friction. Similarly, if it is uh, due to that pressure component, it would be called as uh, drag, due, drag coefficient due to the pressure. 
and uh, here the drag force would be due to the pressure distribution here would be the drag force due to this friction uh, obviously this total drag would be the contribution of the drag due to the friction plus the uh, contribution due to the pressure so uh, here obviously uh, once uh, the drag coefficients uh, is also a combination of the drag coefficient due to this uh, friction part or, or with this pressure part uh, as we already know the drag coefficient is not a constant but uh, since uh, the whole surface over which uh, the fluid interacts with the body uh, this uh, uh, friction and the pressure distribution is changing over the length or whatever I have just taken L as a characteristic length so then uh, we need to calculate the local drag coefficient and see how it varies along the length. Uh, then if you integrate it and uh, divide by the total length you will be able to get the uh, average drag coefficient so uh, here actually without uh, some bar I have just put it so once you have this definition uh, it is actually just like the same definition as your friction coefficient so friction coefficient must be local friction coefficient due to this uh, viscous bar viscous effect and if you integrate it over the whole length and divide by the length then it could be called as an average friction coefficient similarly you have the definition for this average drag coefficient uh, okay now look uh, into this uh, uh, situation you have a problem given where uh, there is a flow or fluid flowing with the u speed u infinity and uh, there is a cylinder of radius r and width b so uh, uh, there is a pressure distribution is shown from 0 to uh, uh, 180 degree and because uh, as we know uh, the pressure distribution is symmetric from 0 to 180 and 180 to 360 so only the distribution given in uh, from 0 to uh, 180 uh, otherwise we have to work out uh, throughout the whole surface so we will see how to work out. Uh, we have to calculate the drag force first and then we will be able to calculate the drag coefficient and here we are ignoring the um, uh, friction drag so because the shear forces are to be neglected in this problem so we know the formula for the drag force is generally we have this pressure component and this wall shear stress component so in this case uh, it is given that the wall shear stress is zero so we have only this uh, pressure distribution is contributing to the drag so we have to see the pressure distribution but as we see uh, pressure is linearly related from 0 to 90 degree and then it has a constant value of this minus rho u infinity squared so we have to integrate this uh, uh, such that uh, uh, first we need this uh, uh, equation how the pressure varies with the theta so we just assume that there is a straight line behavior because as we have seen from this diagram there is a straight line distribution of pressure as a function of theta. Uh, and we know when theta is 0, when you are at 0 your pressure is half rho u infinity square. So just substitute that into this formula. So pressure is uh, half rho u infinity square and theta is 0. So you end up with the value of C to be 1 upon rho u infinity square. Similarly, when your theta is 90, pi by 2, your pressure is minus rho u infinity square. So you substitute this same thing. So you got the value of m. So once you know c and m, you will be substituting back into that equation, the value of m and value of c. So you end up with the pressure expression for pressure distribution between 0 to 90, uh, 0 to pi by 2 or 0 to 90 degrees. So this is the pressure distribution. So this pressure distribution substitutes to be substituted here in order to get the total drag. So that is what we do. So we have the drag uh, and here area is uh, as you know that uh, the uh, parameter uh, of this would be uh, actually this whole area to which uh, uh, the, uh, the fluid is flowing. So we know uh, um, uh, R d theta would be that arc length, R d theta would be that arc length. So if uh, this arc length, uh, whole arc length multiplied by the b that would be your uh, area d a. So 
uh, what I have done is uh, instead of working from 0 to uh, uh, 2 pi uh, 2 pi radian or 360 degree so what I can do is I am using this property of symmetry that uh, the pressure would be uh, twice of the, the drag force between if 0 to 2 pi then I just from 0 to 180 degree and just multiply by 2 so that uh, I have this total drag on this half a half side and the other side. So here I just need to substitute the, as I know the pressure distribution uh, so 2 b and r are uh, not varying with the theta so just take out of an integral so I have just integrate from 0 to 180 degree. And uh, as I know that this integral would be uh, 0 to 180 degree is further there is because there is a different pressure distribution from 0 to 90 and from 90 to uh, 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 180. So from 0 to 90 you have a straight line behavior and then from uh, 180, uh, 90 to 180 you have a constant uh, pressure. So I have just substitute uh, that this is the pressure distribution for this thing and uh, so that would be the pressure distribution for this integral from 0 to 90 limits and from 90 to 180 uh, you have this pressure distribution. So I have to evaluate uh, these two integrals in order to calculate the uh, total drag force. So this integral I just have actually this uh, two part one is from 0 to 90 and second one is from 90 to 180. So I am dealing one by one so first take that integral 0 to 90 and uh, half rho infinity square is a constant to so take out of an integral and I have multiplied by cos theta and uh, 6 by theta cos theta. So the first uh, term is simple cos theta integral and you know the integral of cos theta is sin theta but here you have theta times cos theta so you need to integrate by parts as you know from your inti inti integration knowledge that uh, by integration by parts you can do that uh, x cos x dx would be x sin x plus cos x so I have just substituted here uh, the integrals and uh, just substituted their limits uh, and uh, uh, do the simplification work so that uh, I got this uh, integral is evaluated. So the first integral is evaluated which is half rho u infinity square 6 by pi minus 2. Uh, then we have to do the second integral. The second integral is from 90 to 180 degree. So just have a simple integral because rho u infinity is uh, constant. So I just take out an integral and integral of cos theta would be sin theta substituting the limits and uh, we got this integral. So I have got both integrals and then I have to calculate this summation of the uh, previous result plus this result summed up together to get my total uh, drag force. And if you see this simplify that expression uh, and uh, deliberately I have taken half rho u infinity square uh, out of that uh, bracket uh, deliberately because as I know the, 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 the I am interested in calculating the drag coefficient and here is uh, drag is due to the pressure distribution so that is a pressure drag uh, divided by this uh, kinetic pressure times this area. So here as I see the drag forces have calculated uh, that thing I have just substituted here and half rho u infinity square and area is actually the, the frontal area I have taken here. So 2R is actually the diameter and diameter multiplied by the width would be my the frontal area. So that is how I have calculated this drag coefficient based on that frontal area. So just simplify that. So you end up with the one number that is uh, 6 over pi or 1.91 that is actually the uh, drag coefficient here. So you see uh, we are able to calculate the drag coefficient if we have that pressure uh, distribution. Uh, because uh, here the drag is only due to the pressure component uh, over the surface and uh, not ignoring the uh, viscous effect or the shear stress distribution over the cylinder. So uh, now take some different example. Let us say you have a flat plate. So uh, U infinity is the direction of the free stream. And if you look at the first part the pressure distribution. So pressure from the top plate uh, there is certain pressure and the same pressure is uh, from the bottom plate. So the net pressure would be actually the 
zero pressure so here uh, the drag is only due to the uh, shear stress distribution over the surface so the drag is actually the uh, which has a uh, which has a component from pressure and the shear stress but here uh, in this flat plate case we learned that uh, the pressure distribution on the upper plate and the bottom plate cancels out so the pressure component is zero here uh, only component that is on the horizontal uh, flat plate is uh, 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 experiencing drag is due to the shear, the shear part and as you have seen this wall shear stress uh, on this length is first some bigger value and uh, it decreases uh, as you are moving along the length of this uh, flat plate and this we have seen in this boundary layer concept is this wall shear stress is just like our friction coefficient uh, as x increases the friction coefficient decreases now so here uh, that is actually this sort of a distribution higher at the beginning of the flat plate and uh, at the edge and the end of the flat plate the shear stress is uh, smaller in magnitude so there is a uh, contribution of the drag is only due to the shear stress part uh, if we just uh, take that plate to be vertical and then you see uh, there is a free stream velocity and so there is a, a stagnation point uh, so on this side of the plate you experiencing uh, some higher pressure and uh, on the back side you have some lower pressure so uh, the higher pressure is on this side and the lower pressure is on this side so there is some uh, typical pressure distribution higher on this side and lower on this side and uh, this uh, uh, the drag is always uh, in the direction of the free stream velocity and the uh, wall shear stress distribution is over the whole surface of the cylinder uh, over this vertical plate and there is uh, uh, the certain um, uh, distribution of the shear stress but uh, here the drag is uh, largely due to the uh, pressure component so if you look at more closely so plus sign is here representing the higher pressure and on the front of the plate on the back side of the plate uh, vertical plate you have some low pressure distributions and obviously there is some wall shear stress due to the uh, surface properties at the surface but here the drag is largely caused due to the difference of uh, pressure distribution uh, if you take the case uh, of this flat plate with certain angle so here uh, you have uh, the pressure distribution uh, some higher pressure on this bottom side and some lower pressure so there is some pressure of uh, force is acting and uh, there is some wall shear stress distribution so uh, the force in the direction of the free stream is always a drag force and the uh, lift force is perpendicular to that so once you have a uh, uh, flat plate is uh, placed some at some angle inclined at some angle then uh, it would be experiencing both the drag and the lift force due to the distribution of uh, the pressure and the wall shear stress okay typically if you see the horizontal surfaces as we already have seen the pressure from the bottom and the uh, uh, top uh, at the boundary layer we already have seen this in the y direction the pressure doesn't change we uh, quite in detail we have uh, addressed this uh, flat plate cases so the pressure component for the drag is uh, zero so the largely it is we call it 100 approximately 100 percent is due to that friction so if you have a body shape like this uh, it means uh, here you have uh, some uh, pressure distribution as well as some friction distribution so uh, for this streamlined object uh, this uh, pressure component is 10 percent and approximately and uh, friction is uh, causing the drag uh, could be 90 percent so if you just make that shape more oblong then uh, 60 percent would be due to the a pressure component because here some higher pressure here some lower pressure so 60 percent would be due to the pressure and 40 percent approximately due to the friction so if you make it a cylinder we have already seen this uh, in the cylinder the we have ignored the friction component because it is a smaller uh, in magnitude and it is largely due to the difference of pressure and uh, uh, 
So if you have a flat plate, vertical flat plate, then the 100% would be due to the pressure and the friction part is negligibly small. So uh, both uh, components are acting in, in reality. Uh, but in some cases one component is strong and one component is weaker and the total drag is actually the uh, sum of the pressure drag and the uh, friction drag. So once you talk about a total drag you have to specify whether it is uh, due to the pressure component or due to the friction component. Uh, if you look at the vehicle and you see it's, it's not a uniform distribution. So let's say if uh, you have some free stream pressure and free stream velocity. So the local pressure P is uh, somewhat different from this uh, free stream pressure. So here on this uh, bonnet part, uh, because uh, you know that the velocity is approaching towards uh, uh, zero. So once velocity is approaching towards zero, then the pressure is very high. So on that side, uh, on this part of that, uh, the bonnet the front part, uh, experiencing some uh, higher, uh, some lower pressure because velocity is increasing and in that part where stagnation is there, so when the velocity is zero, the pressure is high. So in that part, pressure would be more than the free stream pressure. So at that part, uh, uh, just uh, at the uh, uh, front end, uh, uh, the pressure is uh, greater and the velocities are smaller and but once uh, there is a distribution and if you see this windshield part then once again there is uh, some uh, higher pressure so velocity is low and once you go on to the uh, top surface uh, once again uh, your velocity is higher and your pressure is low. So P is less than P infinity is this uh, uh, colored part. And so even in the underbody you have some uh, negative pressure. So uh, on the rear side also you have. So uh, depending upon the shape of an object, this pressure distribution could be um, uh, dam complicated. And we have seen a simple uh, geometries like uh, flat plate and cylinders. But in real objects, uh, the pressure distribution is uh, varying over the whole length of the surface. So there is no one value of the drag, but there is some local drag. And if you have integrated over the whole length, you will be able to calculate this so-called average drag. Yeah. So drag is not sort of a constant like stuff. And uh, more complicated things happens even in the cylinder if you have a simple geometry and you have ideal fluid flow then you see uh, uh, your uh, uh, velocity is very uh, low here then the pressure would be high here and uh, when uh, uh, velocity is uh, higher then the pressure would be low. So, so you see there's some negative pressure here but since because of this ideal fluid flow you have a symmetric distribution of uh, pressure so the, uh, the the pressure differentials cancels out each other so there would be no net force uh, and uh, uh, both in the y direction as well as in the horizontal direction uh, that is what we have seen in this potential flow theory as well. But if you increase the Reynolds number, so the pressure distribution changes. So for a smaller Reynolds number, you have a different pressure distribution and for uh, further increasing the Reynolds number, the pressure distribution becomes much more complicated. So, uh, so in calculating the drag, we need to have a knowledge of the pressure distribution and the uh, shear stress distributions uh, and the later we will see that it is uh, uh, in practical cases it could be more complicated so people have done experiments to calculate the drag coefficients so that and they put things in the form of table so that you don't need to go into this first principle approach and uh, calculating drag force from the distribution of pressure and wall shear stress so in the next uh, lecture we will do that alternative approach of calculating the drag force not from this uh, pressure and shear stress distribution, but directly from the knowledge of the uh, drag coefficient. So uh, this is where I stop today's lecture.